happening in a, t- a market in today's sell-off, a product of elevated expectations. Is that what we're seeing? And where do stocks actually go from here? Let's now bring in Mike Bailey. He's the director of research at FBB Capital Partners and, are, of course, Stephanie Link as well, the chief investment strategist and portfolio manager at Hightower. She is also a CNBC contributor. Thank you both very much for being here. Perhaps, Stephanie, we'll start with you on the broader picture. Is this market sell-off, especially the tech side of things, surprising given what we've seen over the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, I think it's cho- the choppiness is really tied to the growth concerns in the economy. The growth is definitely slowing, Dom. I mean, we, we grew GDP last year at 3.4%. Remember in the third quarter, we grew GDP 4.9%. You're now tracking at about 2 2.5%, and that's actually where the Atlanta Fed tracker is for the third quarter. So we are slowing, but I don't think it's a recession. I'm looking at ISM services. They're still in expansion. The retail sales numbers were pretty good, four times the expectations from the government, and factory orders were also better than expected. Not everything is perfect. Jobs are definitely slowing across the board, non-farm payrolls, ADP, initial claims. So we're slowing, but I don't think it's dire. And in the, by the way, I would also just highlight that within all of the uh, jo- job reports that we got this week, wages are actually still strong. Wages and ADP were up almost 5%. And if you switch a job, it's 7.3%. And the average hourly earnings today in non-farm payrolls grew 3.8%. These are year-over-year figures. So I think the consumer is still hanging in. We're just slowing down. Mike, there's a little something for everybody, whether or not you're an optimist or a pessimist. And I've heard that word, the proper noun, thrown around, Goldilocks. You hear it quite often with regard to some of these economic reports. Do you feel as though today's report was both bad and good enough to call it Goldilocks? I think there's definitely a mix of good and bad. I think in general, just based on the market reaction, uh, it was too cool. Uh, that that was that's the uh, the final answer, if you will. So uh, certainly wasn't a, a terrible jobs report. wasn't incredible. Unfortunately, uh, expectations were really high, and so we're seeing almost a repeat of what we got a month ago. We've got high expectations. Oh, by the way, bad macro and bad micro. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Broadcom results coming out and disappointing. So. Unfortunately, when investors expect everything to be working perfectly, you get a tiny wrinkle in there, especially on the macro, comes a day after a bad uh, semi-result. This is what you're looking at. So kind of a a mixed result, not the worst thing in the world, but definitely a a tough way to end the week here. Steph, I just want to go back to Broadcom uh, for a second because you were one of the early voices saying that this was, you know, the right horse to bet on. And look at what a run that it's had. It was it was just uh, put in a position of the mag eighth component of a theoretical mag eight by our guests last hour. So is this 10 (laughs) percent pullback for you a buying opportunity or are the best days behind us now? Is it time to, you know, move to the sidelines and look for, you know, the next the next big movers, the next great stocks? I think you can leg into it, and I absolutely will be doing that next week. Um, The stock was up 36% year-to-date, headed into the print, up 63% in the past year. So it's had a heck of a run, as you mentioned. Um, I did not think that the quarter was bad or disappointing at all. In fact, I mean, I thought that the commentary around VMware and the margins and the free cash flow really were very impressive. The problem was the cyclical part of the business, not the AI. That's what everyone got jazzed up about, myself included. The cyclical part of the business didn't see a recovery. But orders in the quarter for the last two quarters were up 20 percent in the cyclical parts of the business. So that's to come. And then you have a, the whole AI revenue bump that they actually increased their revenues uh, for, for that segment as well. So I think that this CEO is very conservative. And uh, anybody who was expecting a massive uh, guide up uh, obviously is disappointed, but I was not expecting that. So That's I'm definitely really, looking long term and, and, and I'll be buying it. Really, yeah. really interesting. And just to kind of dwell on this, because we are seeing the chips go down in sympathy here. We've seen NVIDIA under, it could, could it be a 30 percent drop uh, in recent weeks as well? Yeah. Are there any other tactical moves you'd make where you say, OK, the sell off based on then the concern around Broadcom, the whole all of that is unjustified? Well, all of these stocks have had a really nice run and everyone and their mother owns NVIDIA at this point. So I just think you've got to let the dust settle on that one. Maybe let the dust settle on Broadcom, too. I have to tell you, the one name I've been adding to, it's not semis, it's CrowdStrike. Because that stock was down as much as 41 percent from its high due to the outage issue. And their quarter was very good. Earnings grew 40 percent, revenues 30 percent, retention 98 percent. So there are places where I'm picking and choosing.